Hi everyone, this is Heather from the Flourish Academy, where our goal is to equip you with the best techniques and tips to make you a better and more efficient photographer. Make sure you check out all of the free resources available at flourish.academy. Yeah, and that's right, we don't need a .com. <laughs> It's just Flourish.Academy. Today we're going to look at the new facial liquify tool inside of Photoshop CC. But first you're going to want to make sure that you have the latest version of the Creative Cloud. So you're looking at 2015.5.1 or newer in order to access this tool. This is my dear friend Reyna, and here's the photo directly out of the camera. And then I made some Lightroom adjustments to get it to this. And then I ran my retouch action, which is available on my website in order to smooth her skin. I'm going to begin by duplicating the background layer with a Command J on the Mac, that's Control J on the PC. In order to access the Liquify tool, you can press Command Shift X, that's Control Shift X on the PC. And if you have the newest version of the Creative Cloud, you'll notice that you have a new icon for the Face Aware Liquify. Now, typically when I am using the Liquify filter, I am in the Forward Warp tool, but I think now I'm going to be visiting this Facial Aware Liquify just to experiment and have some fun. As a disclaimer, I should mention that I think everyone has perfect faces and they are meant to be exactly as they are. This is just a way to maybe enhance or move some things that people don't like about themselves. Let's look at a few of these options. Right here we have face one, and the reason this is showing is because there's only one face in the photo, but if you had multiple faces, you would see face one, two, etc. There are essentially two ways that you can make changes to the photo. You can come over into the sliders and slide them, or you can hover your cursor interactively over the photo and click and drag, in this case, in order to increase or decrease the eye width. We can make the eyes bigger or smaller, and we can even increase the eye height. Now you'll notice that as I do that interactively on the photo, those sliders change in the right panel. And as you hover around the photo, you will get different selection points in order to impact different parts of the photo. But let's take a look at these sliders individually. We've already looked at the eye size, height, width, and now the tilt. We have the eye distance, which we can increase or decrease. You can make the nose shorter or longer. You can make it wider or more narrow. You can improve the smile in a variety of ways. They obviously have the smile slider, and then we can adjust the thickness of the upper and lower lips, as well as the mouth width and the mouth height. You can increase or decrease the size of the forehead with this slider. And then we have the chin height and jawline. When this tool was first introduced, I was actually pleasantly surprised at how well it worked. I'm going to say okay in order to return this result. And if we look at the before and after, we've made Raina quite a different person. However, occasionally I do want to open one eye more than the other. So let's take a look at this before. Her left eye is a little bit smaller than her right eye and I like the fact that I was able to make it bigger with that tool but I didn't want to impact her right eye so I'm going to add a layer mask by clicking the layer mask icon at the bottom of the layers palette pressing B on my keyboard in order to access my brush tool making sure that black is my foreground color and I'm going to mask out the right eye just so I can have the result returned for the left eye and you'll see how it opened the left eye, but it kept the right eye the same. I took it a little bit far and I would have to readjust that, but I really just wanted to give you an overview of the tool and the power that it contains. I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.